Hey everybody, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to pass through a GPU within a Kubernetes cluster. And the example I chose was Jellyfin. Now for applications like Jellyfin, you're probably gonna need to mount some external storage. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to mount an existing SMB share into a pod. Now I'm using FreeNAS to do this, but any SMB share will work. And there's a few steps that we need to follow. So let's jump straight into those steps and then we'll get into the deployment. So thankfully it's really straightforward. The first thing we need to do is to install the CSI driver. So this will deploy a number of pods within our cluster to enable it to mount SMB shares. The next thing we need to do are to enter our SMB credentials and we'll save these as a secret within Kubernetes. And then finally, what we need to do is to create the storage class. So once we've got that, we've got all of the bits that we need to configure and connect to an SMB. The final part of the puzzle is to create persistent volumes and persistent volume claims. And within those, we specify these credentials and these storage classes. I'll show you that now. So the persistent volume claim looks like this. I create one for each of my pods. So here you'll see persistent volume, I've called it Jellyfin and I put SMB. That's because the Jellyfin I'm using already has another persistent volume because it's using it to store things like its config within Longhorn. And that will be the default setup you've got if you followed my previous video. The key bits that we need to have a look at here are the volume attributes. And this is where you specify the source, i.e. the IP address and the share name of your SMB folder. Below that, you'll see that it specifies the SMB creds. And I've just left this in the default namespace, but feel free to put this in the Jellyfin or whichever pod that you're using. Once you've specified the persistent volume, you can then make a claim against it. And so the claim just looks like this. It's really simple. And you don't need to change anything in here to get this working. Then once you've got this set up, you can head over to the deployment and now you can create something new. So for example, here in the volume section, I can create a persistent volume claim and I can specify that one that we just created up here. And then say for example, I've got some audiobooks, some films some TV shows and some music. I can then actually mount those within the Jellyfin container or pod. And to do that, we specify volume mounts like we've done previously. So remember, this will be the mount point within the container. So it will have a new folder called slash audiobooks. And then the subpath, so this is the subpath on the SMB share. So if you have an SMB share, in this instance, you would need to have a folder called audiobooks. And it's a similar format for films, TV shows, music. I've just copied that. So this assumes that you've got those folders in the root of your SMB share. If they're not in the root, you just have to put some slashes here and change it to your setup. So let's head now into the deployment and let's get this spun up. So over on my admin machine, the first thing that we need to do is to install the driver. So looking at the instructions, we can copy this command here. And once we paste that into our terminal, we can run that. And that should go away now and deploy all of the pods that we need to get this started, i.e. the drivers. Once that's done, we're in a position to create our credentials. Do bear in mind that this might take some time to deploy. So you can use a watch command to have a look at this deploying. To do that, you just use the standard kubectl watch command. And here you can see that there's already three running, so that's great. And there's already three of the SMB node running as well. So everything's up and running for me. So I can go on to the next stage, which is to create my SMB credentials. So here's the command to create the secret. Pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to change the password to your password for your SMB share and change the username to the user of your SMB share. So I'm going to change those to mine now and then I'm going to hit this command and we'll check that that's deployed later in Rancher. So thanks to the power of editing, I've just made a quick change to this so that you can actually deploy this using kubectl and a web YAML. So copy this create storage class link at the bottom. My face is in the way, sorry and we'll put that into our terminal. 
So when we run this, it's going to go away and deploy all of those files. And you can see that the storage class has now been created. So let's hop into Rancher and let's just verify that everything went to plan. Now over in Rancher, and hopefully your setup looks something similar to this. And just so you're aware, this is RKE2, but K3S will be exactly the same. So if we go and have a look at a few of the new things that we've created. So first of all, let's have a look at the storage and we can click secrets. And then if I scroll down here, we should see the SMB creds. Yeah, there we go. We can see the SMB creds. It's got a password and a username and it's in the namespace of default, which is what we specified. Now, if we go to storage classes, you can see that we've got two storage classes. We've got Longhorn, which was pre-existing. And we've got the SMB, which is the one that we just deployed in the final command that we ran in our terminal. So the next thing we need to do is hop back into our terminal and we need to add the new files that I showed you before. So we need to update the deployment of Jellyfin. We need to add the PV YAML and the PVC YAML. And remember, you need to update those files to specify the IP address of your SMB share. So now my manifest folder for Jellyfin looks like this. I've got the deployment and I've got the two PVCs. And if we have a look inside, here's my SMB. That one didn't need to change. And here's the PV. And remember, this one now has the IP address and the share name of my SMB mount. So that's great. So what we can do now is simply go back into our terminal and we can just do a kubectl deploy and then tell it to deploy this entire folder. So for me, that's kubectl apply f manifests slash jellyfin. And now if I run that, it's created jellyfin. The service hasn't changed because we haven't changed the service. It's created the PV for SMB and the PVC. So let's quickly have a look and check that that has taken place. So if we go now to the persistent volumes at the top, you can see that the existing one here, this PVC, this is the one in Longhorn, so where all the configs are kept. And now we've got this new one here, a persistent volume Jellyfin SMB. And this is bound, which means if we go to the persistent volume claims, this is also bound. So this claim is bound to this volume. And that's good. That means that this has worked. If you'd have put in the wrong IP or the wrong credentials, this wouldn't have bound and you'll have to go back and change those and redeploy it. But hopefully now I can hop into Jellyfin and see the folders on my SMB. So I have flattened my Jellyfin container, so I'm going to go through the install wizard again because it handily asks you to add folders. And so now visiting Jellyfin, I've just got it in incognito because it's a bit funny with caching sometimes when you deploy a new Jellyfin on the same IP address. By hitting return, you can see that we're into the welcome wizard. So let's hit next. I'm going to leave it as root, hit next, and then moment of truth. Let's hit add a media library. So let's have a look at the content type. So I don't know, let's choose some TV shows. And then we need to add a folder. Oh, this looks good because remember in the config file, these are the slash folder names that we specified within the deployment now, and these are linked to that SMB PVC. So if we go to TV shows and click OK, here we go, we can see some of the files that I've got in this folder. And now if I click OK and finish it, with any luck, once we complete the setup wizard, we should start to see that populated. And yeah, it's starting to now populate the shows. And fingers crossed, we're going to get all of the shows and we've still got the GPU transcoding. So let's have a look. And here you can see some that it's pulling and it'll be pulling a ton more in the background. And so if I just play one of these, hopefully this should work. Yeah, excellent. There we go. I've got access to Jellyfin and it's using the PVC that is an SMB mount. So hopefully that was a quick and easy guide to show you how to mount SMB storage into your pods, which is the perfect companion for things like Plex and Jellyfin or Image. Basically anything that requires large storage or storage that's pre-existing. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.